matches under Graham Taylor, and they're brimming with confidence. Spurs, on the other hand, have to keep the fires burning before Terry Venables makes his entrance in a month's time. Well, our man at the match is Alan Parry. It's certainly been an eventful few days for these Tottenham players who've been caught in the middle of the dramatic goings-on at White Hart Lane. And now they face a real test of character in the sort of cup tie Spurs could well have done without at this particular moment. Aston Villa are high on confidence after their unbeaten run. Graham Taylor has gradually been rebuilding the side since taking over as manager in the summer, though he has no fewer than seven of his first-team squad out injured. The experienced Steve Hunt is Villa's latest casualty. His place in midfield goes to David Hunt, the former Notts County player. The defence has been Villa's strength so far, and Mark Walters is in outstanding form in attack. The Spurs side has been picked by coach Trevor Hartley, and they're without three England internationals, Ray Clements, Steve Hodge and Chris Waddle. But Johnny Metgard returns in midfield. There are happy memories for Clive Allen on the opening day of the season in the league last year. He scored a hat-trick here and went on to score 49 goals, a club record. Tonight's referee is Ian Hendrick from Preston. So Aston Villa kick off in their famous claret and blue shirts, attacking from left to right. They're currently fourth in the second division, with the strange record of having won only one out of eight games at home, but with six victories out of eight away from home. And Spurs know they must calm it down in these opening exchanges when Villa are bound to come at them. Good ball by Stevens. Clive Allen turns. But Keown's clearance is a good one. And there's real danger here. And that was superb goalkeeping by Parks. McAnally turning away quickly and is brought down. But the real danger was from the run by Warren Aspinall just before that. And if Tony Parks hadn't have acted so quickly, then Tottenham could well have been in trouble in the opening minutes. Either Kevin Gage or David Hunt will hit this. It's Gage who strikes it, and the wall did its job. never came. Five minutes gone and Spurs could well have been a goal down on two occasions. This is Birch. Good ball for McAnally. Aspinall's in the middle again. Walters. Oh, beautiful play. And he drove it against Stevens. He's always got the confidence to take defenders on Mark Walters. Walters earns the first corner of the match for Aston Villa. Oh, good header on, and it's there! McAnally has given Aston Villa the lead. Eight minutes gone, and the Scot gets his first ever goal as an Aston Villa player. He came summer from Celtic and this is a moment he'll look back on for a long time with satisfaction in his career it was a superb corner flicked on beautifully at the near post by Keown and McAnally heading it early home Paul Allen now for Spurs Klassen takes on Gallagher again and that was fine running by Paul Allen into the space Hunt was there to cut out the cross Diles trying to hold off Hunt. And gets it back again from Stevens. And finds Klassen. 
He finds Clive Allen, Klassen again, it was lovely football, but the deflection went Villa's way. That's a fine throw by Spink, Birch on the counter-attack. He's beaten Thomas, and he finds McAnally, who finds Aspinall. Oh, Birch there again, and that would have been a spectacular goal if he could have made a decent contact. But I think, really, in that attack, we saw the difference between these two sides. Tottenham played a lot of neat, one-touch, triangle football, if you like, involving a lot of players. Villa just got on with it very quickly and almost got a goal out of it. Graham Taylor really enjoyed, surely, Villa's first half performance, and his coach, Steve Harrison, next to him, still spitting out the orders. Here's Gage for Villa. It's a good ball, because Aspinall will keep chasing. But again, he's up against one of the smartest defenders in Mabbott. You can alley doing well, finding Gage. Gage's cross. Ooh, that was a terrible error! And how lucky Stephen was then not to concede an own goal in hard and left-footed and Stevens here could well have been the most embarrassed man on the field Ardiles Clive Allen Ardiles again Lillis making it difficult for him he went full circle in the end Keown's clearance was a lovely one to McAnally. And still McAnally, what a great challenge though by Thomas. Paul Allen now for Spurs. Two men in the centre, one of them is Ardiles. Came to Clive Allen. And the shot kept in by Paul Allen and Spink going down on the near post to save. Graham Taylor really leaning forward and getting into the atmosphere of this game as Villa attack again. The cross aimed towards Walters and McAnally and they both went up in spectacular fashion. Klassen coming deep to receive it. Lovely ball, Matt got to Stevens. Paul Allen thundering down the right in support. Ardiles in the middle. And still Ardiles. And it's a fine run by Ardiles. And he nearly went all the way. But there were just too many Villa bodies. Ardiles just kept on going. But ran into a forest of claret and blue. Ardiles, nimble little feet and wonderful skills. Mabbott forward, finding Ardiles again. Fullback Thomas is forward in a left wing position. Here he is. Cross cut out by Gage. Ardiles. Birch challenging. Tottenham's throw. And they're beginning to get more and more possession here. Clive Allen for Spurs now. Tried the little turn, which didn't come off, but he's kept it. Ardiles. And still Ardiles. Now Klassen. Thomas. Not a good cross. Sims clearance. But Mabbott is there again. Oh, he's a wholehearted player. Mabbott, so is Sims. Thomas to Ardiles. Swarms of white Tottenham shirts around the Villa box now. Hewton. Testing moments in the game, these for Villa. Paul Allen. And the cross beaten away by Hunt for a corner.
Great run here by Paul Allen. Stevens with the shot, and it was deflected, and it's gone in. And Ardiles is claiming it. And Tottenham are level again. Well, it's satisfaction for Stevens because he very nearly ended the first half by conceding an own goal. He drove that there. Well, does Ozzy claim that was a shot or a deflection? Let's say it's his goal. Aston Villa won, Tottenham Hotspur won, and Ozzy Ardiles, whether he meant it or not, gets his first goal of the season. Ardiles to Paul Allen. Samways. Stevens. Ardiles again. The heart of every best move Tottenham have had, and he finds Samways, and that's to be real danger here. Oh, he chose the wrong option. There were three players well placed, and Samways really did the wrong thing. He'll admit that himself, I'm sure. And as you can see here, Samways looked up, must have thought about crossing it, and then changed his mind for some reason. Walters clouting it forward. Thomas didn't see Birch behind him. Oh, but yes, he did well under pressure. Hewton for Spurs. 1-1 one, one the score. McAnally for Villa. Three defenders, he'll have to go all alone. He tripped. Birch is there to help. Hunt finds Walters. And still Walters. Oh, a superb effort. Good goalkeeping too by Parks. Corner kick to Aston Villa. Oh, Keown got the header in again. Hunt is there, back into the box. And in the end, as Tottenham pushed forward, Aspinall's shot was hooked over. The real danger to Spurs there came from the initial run by Walters, who took on Stevens on the outside and beat him, drove it left-footed. Good save. Ardiles inevitably. Good ball to Mabbott. Paul Allen went down, but uh, no question of a foul. Walters really sprinting clear. Oh, Linford Christie would have been impressed with that. He's still going. And he's won a throw in, and he's run virtually the length of the pitch to do that. sending plenty of men forward now in fact it's a corner the ball deflecting for a Villa corner good header away by Samways Gallagher picks it up again here's Birch still plenty in the middle for him Lillis going up well and getting in oh and it's in yes Aspinall got the vital touch Lillis's shot was a beauty, and have between them these two forged the Villa winner, I wonder. Lillis, the number four, a fine effort, parked it well to keep it out. Aspinall was there to slide it over the line. And Aston Villa go in front end. Really shows terrific personality on their part, I think, because Tottenham had really dominated this second half. I'll tell you what, the tension of being a football manager has never been better displayed than by those pictures. Paul Allen for Tottenham. Moran. Ozzy there again. Only three minutes on the watch. Headed down for Clive Allen. The shot took a deflection and hit the crossbar. Woo! Clive Allen, so close. A couple of inches would have done it. 
Spink, superb. That's what you want with a couple of minutes to go and you're under pressure, a goalkeeper who can handle like that. But just before that, even he'd do nothing as it deflected off Keown and he watched it drop onto the bar. Ooh. And there's the final whistle. Tottenham's traumatic week continues, but Aston Villa celebrate a famous victory. And Graham Taylor, who came here in the summer from Watford, where, of course, he achieved miracles in a marvellous ten years, has, with the help of fanatical support and a hard-working team, produced another Littlewoods Cup casualty from the first division. Second division, Aston Villa, win by two goals to one. Aspinall getting the winning goal. Alan McAnally the first. Even Ozzy Ardiles, who was probably the man of the match, with his goal for Tottenham, couldn't rescue things in the end. And the crowd go home very happy as Aston Villa go into the next round. So, a superb result for Villa and the atmosphere there, reminiscent of their heady days at the top not so long ago. But how does it affect manager Graham Taylor's attitude to the job he took over during the summer? It's been widely reported that he's unhappy in his relationship with the chairman, Doug Ellis. There's even been talk of his leaving Villa Park. Well, that's not true. I haven't had any clashes with the chairman. Um, what I have uh, said is there are a number of things that have to be done at, uh, at Villa Park. And you know as well as I do, um, Alan, the, there'll always be a lot of speculation. So I, I think I ought to put that right. I haven't had clashes with the chairman. And I expect to see... I've signed a four-year contract. And I don't see any reason why I shouldn't see out that contract at, uh, at Villa. Graham and I get on very well. And as far as I'm concerned, I make it clear I've killed the myth many times, I'll kill it again. Graham Taylor has complete control of everything to do with the playing business of Aston Villa. I look after the finances. That's my job, and he accepts that. So, an air of contentment at Villa Park. But what of Spurs? Shell-shocked after the departure of David Pleat. Well, Chairman Irving Scholar has got the man he wanted, Terry Venables. Terry Venables, I think, is an exceptional manager. Uh, I don't really think he's had the real credit that he deserves for the achievements at Barcelona. Um, if you analyse what he did there, it's quite an outstanding achievement. He's the longest serving manager at Barcelona since the war and the first manager to lift the championship there for 12 years. He got them to the European Cup final. Um, his outstanding achievements there are magnificent. Uh, we hope a little, little bit of that will rub off on us. Uh, I think the Juventus obviously were very keen on him. I think they've been uh, uh, looking at Terry and considering his position at Barcelona for some time. I think it's a great coup actually for English football that Terry's coming back. Um, uh, in financial terms, obviously, if he was to go to Italy as manager Juventus, he would be able to earn perhaps three, four times as much as he would do uh, coming back to England. I'm delighted, obviously, he's coming back to England. And I think, as I say, it's a boost rather than at this time with so many players moving abroad. Ian Rush, uh, Mark Hughes, Gary Lineker, etc. It's nice, I think, to turn the tide. How do you think he's going to... But Terry Venables won't be feeling too happy as he relaxes in Florida this evening. Well, later, we're off to Plough Lane for another all-first division tie between Wimbledon and Newcastle, but right now it's time to catch up with the rest of the night's news.